This is going to make so much sense for how they are going to move to a uh, mark of the beast system. How they're going to move to the mark of the beast system. And what I'm doing real quick is searching my book, Grave Influence. Many of you will remember, I've still got to find it here, but many of you remember Bank for International Settlements. Many of you will remember that for many years I have warned about the Bank for International Settlements, something I've been warning about probably for close to 15 plus years, right? It's based in Basel, Switzerland. Think of it as the central bank of central bankers. In fact, Carol Quigley in his 1966 book, Tragedy and Hope, warned that global governance would come into view through the Bank for International Settlements. Now, when I started talking about this 15 plus years ago, most people like myself, when I stumbled on it in my research, had never heard of the Bank for International Settlements. Well, the central banks of the world belong. So America belongs and they have regular meetings, what are called GEM meetings or global economy meetings. Now, Carol Quigley in 1966, a globalist who, by the way, Bill Clinton gave him a shout out at his Democratic uh, Convention uh, National Acceptance Speech. Carol Quigley, who was his professor at Georgetown, gave him a shout out. But Carol Quigley in 1966, writing the book Tragedy and Hope as a globalist saying, hey, I think we should tell everybody about this. They were all like, no, be quiet, be quiet. But he's like, no, we should tell everybody. This is wonderful. And he told us after reviewing all of their papers and documents and conferences that one way globalism would come about, he said in 1966, would be through the Bank for International Settlements, the Central Bank of Central Bankers. Now, we have all been wondering, how is it that they are going to tell us you will own nothing and be happy? The World Economic Forum says by 2030, you will own nothing and you'll be happy. And many of us have tried to figure out, what do they mean by that? What do they mean by you'll own nothing? Some of you in this audience have worked your whole life and you have paid off your house. You've worked so hard and saved and conserved. And you've paid off your house and you've paid off your car, our cars, plural, and you have no debt. And you've worked hard at that. And you're thinking to yourself, how is it that they're saying by 2030, I'm going to own nothing? How are they going to steal my stuff? How are they going to steal my property? Because that's what they're talking about doing. We just didn't know how they were going to do it. Well, this week, this week, Monday, Monday, July 10th, 2023, the Bank for International Settlements released a report. It's a 34-page report thus far, part three. A 34-page report. Central bankers plan to steal your property through tokenization and taxation. Now you're saying, what is tokenization? Well, in a nutshell, folks, they're going to take your bank accounts. They're going to take your car. They're going to take your house. If you have worked to, say, have a cabin up north, I know many of you in uh, Wisconsin and Minnesota and Michigan have cabins, and some of them have been uh, given to you uh, as part of your inheritance from your parents or your grandparents. Some of you have family farms that you've inherited. Right. And you maybe don't operate them. You're not a farmer. You rent them out to a farmer and you make some side money by renting out the family's farmland that's been in your family for generations. And that's a little extra revenue for your family. But you got you also have a hard asset there. Right. And it's paid for your family. Multiple generations worked for it, paid it off. And your family is blessed to have that in their heritage. Right. All of that is going to go on a ledger sheet. All of that is going to go on to a ledger sheet. Everything that we own will be inventoried and put on a ledger sheet. And then it will be tokenized. Meaning, for instance, your house. Let's say your house is paid for and you have a deed, right? And for some of you, the day you paid off your house and you got the copy of that deed in the mail was a big, big day, right? You're holding the deed. You own it. 
Here's the paperwork. I own this house free and clear, other than the fact you got to pay property tax, you know, city, county tax, whatever. But other than that, you own it, and you've got a lot of equity in that house from a lot of hard work. Let's just say the house is worth, I don't know, let's just pull a figure out. Some of you, your house is worth 200000 250 For some of you, your house is worth half a million. Some of you in the bigger cities, those houses are 800000 You know, they're, 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 with inflation and the menu, you know, cost of rebuilding, uh, things are going up, right? So some of you live in a what you thought was a pretty modest house, but now it's in a major city worth seven, 800000 That's not uncommon in America. Just wait. It's going to get to be worse with inflation. But let's say the house is worth... 300,000. Let's just say 300. It's paid off. You got the deed. They're going to take the equity in your paid off house. They're going to put it on a ledger through the Bank for International Settlements, which is the headquarters for the Central Bank of Central Bankers. And they're going to take your $300,000 equity in your house and they're going to tokenize it. They're going to tokenize it. They're going to create money out of thin air by tokenizing your real estate. Now your name and your social security number is tied to a ledger and the value of your property. You're like, how am I going to own nothing? What are they going to come in and steal it? Yes. I think we have now figured out how it is they're going to steal it. Now, here's the document. Came out Monday. Blueprint for the Future Monetary System, Improving the Old, Enabling the New. Well, what do you got to do first, folks? Remember what it's called? Build back better. You got to burn it to the ground. But you're listening to this right now and you're saying, there's no way they're going to do that. I'm willing to go to war because if they steal my property, they can steal anything and everything. And that's a dictatorship. And at that point, we have the right, God-given right, under the laws of nature, nature's God, and the Constitution to go to war. You think what Europe and Great Britain, the king was doing, I should say, you think what England was doing to the settlers invading their homes, taking up residence in their home, imprisoning them without trial, doing all the things, you thought that was bad, and that brought about a revolution. Well, my friends, we're headed for a global revolution. This is what is going to set up the mark of the beast. And if you don't obey these laws and you say something you shouldn't say, you post something on social media, or you quote the Bible, maybe you even go to church and you don't go to a government-approved church, and that's coming, you're going to have a social credit score and you get dinged. And up till now, you've said, well, I'm not paying any of that. Well, when they tokenize all of your assets, take all your assets, even those that are paid for, and put it on a ledger, they're then going to start dinging and taxing. They'll do this under the guise of tax, like they did Obamacare, and the courts will likely go along with it. And every time you do something they don't like, or every time you say something they don't like, or if you make too much money, they're going to tax you. And they're going to take it out of your tokenization. And pretty soon, your house that you have paid off can be like a reverse mortgage. Money cart's coming out. But at this time, instead of coming to you as a reverse mortgage, <laughs> it goes to the government. Now you're back to making house payments. You think I'm joking? Read the document. Yeah, there's a lot to, for us to learn about this still. Uh, but it is based on blockchain, okay? And digitization. This is part of the digitization of humanity, that the Great Reset calls for. Uh, they want to now digitize your assets, monetize and digitize, and, uh, and put the controlling factor over those assets outside of your reach. In other words, you are no, long the so no longer the, the sole determiner over how your property will be used and actually how much of it you really own. Now, let me go to the BIS. This is the actual BIS document that came out this Monday, uh, folks. The Bank for National Settlements, the Central Bank of Central Bankers. Here they say, today the monetary system stands at the cusp of another major leap. Following dematerialization and digitization, the key development is tokenization. The process of representing claims digitally on a programmable platform. This can be seen yes. as the next logical step in digital record keeping and asset transfer. There's the key word there, folks. 
asset transfer. You will own nothing and be happy. Uh, also, let me just did you, you catch? Folks. Also, Remember? I think a big, a big word there also was programmable. That's programmable, that's where your yeah. blo- your blockchain comes in, and if your money, which isn't real money, it's just tokens. If it's if it's not just digital but programmable, who's doing the programming? It's not us. It's AI, and they set the algorithms to uh, uh, socially score you on their social credit system, which then they can uh, uh, take away or add tokens to your bank account. And notice it says here, removing the traditional separation of messaging, reconciliation, and settlement. Tokenization could unlock new types of economic arrangement that the frictions inherit inherent in the current monetary system have heretofore made impractical. So they're going to go to a new monetary system. They're telling you that. We come back, we'll get into it. Folks, let me tell you something. This is, I'm going to just say it. This is laying the foundation for the mark of the beast. There are no two ways about it. You will own nothing. You'll be happy. You will not be able to buy or sell. Wow. But you but More you will be obedient. Don't go away. Let's go back to this brand new document just released by the Bank for International Settlements, the Central Bank of Central Bankers on Monday. Here's what it says, Leo. The success of tokenization rests on the foundation of trust provided by central bank money and its capacity to knit together key elements of the financial system. This capacity derives from the central bank's role at the core of the monetary system. Among its many functions, the central bank issues the economy's unit of account and ensures the finality of payments through settlement on its balance sheet. Building on the trust in central bank money, the private sector uses its creativity and ingenuity to serve customers. So what have we been telling you, folks? You're going to have to have a Federal Reserve account. We've been telling you that now for several months. It was supposedly launched this month, FedNow. Individuals, Companies, your business will have to all have a Fed now Federal Reserve account. What is the Federal Reserve, folks? It's America's central bank. What is the Bank for International Settlements? Let's put out this paper. It is the headquarters of the centralized banks of the westernized world. They meet regularly in Basel, Switzerland for what are called their GEM meetings, their global economy meetings. So now... You understand why you have to have the Fed now and everybody has an account and your local commercial bank will now simply be paper shufflers for the central bank. They're going to take your assets, put them on a ledger, and they're going to tokenize them. Uh, By reading from that document as to who's going to be ultimately in control of this. The Federal Reserve, the national banks, the central banks. This is, uh, in a way, it's the digitization of money. It's the programmable, making the money programmable, but it's also the, seems to be the privatization of money because the Federal Reserve is not a government entity. Very few people know this. It's actually privately owned uh, by a clan of po- very powerful bankers. Um, and they're already promoting this at the academic level at the elite level listen to this article i just found uh on a website a uh, financial website i believe called banker tilly it says some people just prefer the traditional the tangible they like the feel of cash in their pocket not a debit card the steering wheel on a car and not a uber account or the painting on the wall not an nft if that's you tokens may not be your thing but for everyone else, the prospect and benefits of, benefits of tokenize, tokenizing real estate is intriguing. So they're talking about tokenizing your, your real estate. Uh, think about everything else that's gone digital. It just hit me. Uh, that's why they call it virtual assets, because it's not real. Things that are digital are not real. Think about digital uh digital photographs, which became a thing about 10, 15 years ago. Before that, 
people, what? They developed their film and they got actual photographs. But now most people walk around with digital photos on their phone or on their laptop. If that laptop or that phone is destroyed, they no longer have their photos because they don't have a hard copy. It's just digital. Digital is not real. That photograph only becomes real when you print it out. Now you have a physical rendition of the image that you snapped a picture of. They are now trying to do the same thing with physical assets, starting, it sounds like, with your real estate. Uh, but I believe they'll do the same thing with vehicles. You'll be able to uh, tokenize your vehicle. You'll be able to tokenize uh, your precious metals that you may want to invest in. Uh, any physical asset they want to strip away from you and digitize it, tokenize it, and that turns the ultimate authority over to somebody else. There was ever a time to start legally and lawfully, you know, protecting your assets? Uh, this this would probably be it. And you say, well, the rapture is coming. I won't care. Uh, you know what I say? Stick it to the man. Uh, if you could, if you could take some of your assets and hide them away, so the government and the mark of the beast system doesn't get it, I don't care if it ever gets dug up out of the ground. At least those crooks and demonic entities didn't get it. Um, so maybe, maybe the American people should uh, start buying precious metals while they can, if for no other reason, just to stick it to the man and make sure their 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 assets aren't tokenized as a part of the mark of the beast system. That's my biblical opinion. But look at what this document says. Show this, guys. Moreover, by having everything in one place, oh, that's wonderful, everything in one place, a unified huh. ledger provides a setting in which a broader array of contingent actions can be automatically executed to overcome information and incentive, incentive, incentive problems. Uh, you mean like what? Social credit scores? In this way, tokenization yeah. could expand the universe of possible contracting outcomes. The unified ledger just opens the way for entirely new types of economic arrangement that aren't that are impossible today due to incentive and informational frictions. The eventual transformation of the financial system will be limited only by the imagination and ingenuity of developers that build on the system. Well, that's great. That that's that's just wonderful, right? I mean, is this not a perfect way for the mark of the beast to come in. And then I scroll on down the page and it talks about tokenization basics. Traditional ledger systems and tokenized systems operate under fundamentally different rules. In traditional ledger systems, account managers are entrusted with maintaining and updating an accurate record of ownership. In contrast, in a tokenized setting, money or assets become, quote, executable objects, end quote, that are maintained on programmable platforms. Sorry to alert you, Leo. You work with that radical Brandon House. You no longer own your house. Look at it. No, I mean, they could be again, transferred I, through. My, the, question, my question is, who's main, who is programming the platform? It's going to be AI, artificial intelligence, run by algorithms that are set by uh, globalist leftist elites who hate our guts. And like you said, do not uh, do not have any affinity for Brandon House Live, LeoOman.com. They could be transferred through the execution of programming instructions issued by a by system participants without the intervention without the intervention of the account manager. Whoa! While tokenization does not eliminate the role of intermediaries. It changes the nature of that role. The role of the operator in a tokenized environment is a trusted intermediary serving in a governance role. Listen now. As the rule books curator. As the rule books. What uh, rules? Uh, so who's Rather than as rule? a bookkeeper. So it's no longer about a bookkeeper. It's about a who is the governance, who has serves in a governance role as the rule books curator. Rather than as and, a bookkeeper who records individual transactions on behalf of an account holder. Ooh. It adds new meaning to the term governance under the ESG movement, the environmental, social, and governance score. So we see now that there's probably algorithms, AI, uh, virtual people, bots, 
who make up this uh, uh, system, the governance system of the programming entity, and they can uh, strike you with demerits or add merits based on how obedient to the system you are. Well, look at it. Look what it says. We discuss in a later section how this dual nature of tokens can be used to, in, to good effect in a supervisory and compliance setting by directly embedding supervisory features into the token itself, which can be tailored to specific rules. Right? Now, here's the graphic. Look at the graphic. Rules. What the asset can and cannot do, e.g. be used in smart contracts. Information, what the asset is, where it comes from, who owns it, etc. What the asset can and cannot do. Um, buy meat. Buy more than your share of fossil fuel. I mean, wow, wow, and wow is all I can say. And we haven't finished going through the document.